Okay. Hi everyone, Sarah here with the paper cut. First things first, let's check our sound. Hi everyone. Oh, <laughs> my mom didn't have her turn, hers turned no, off. I so listening. we have sound. <laughs> and I think it's good. And we have video because I can see myself. So, so anyways, let me know how the sound is for all of you. Um, I'm just going to wait till somebody chimes in and says the sound is good before I get um, going too much here. Let's see. Okay. So what do we have coming up? We have um, this weekend we have our crafters classroom. Oh, Wendy Little says she can hear and the sound is good. Yay. Okay. So Coming up on Saturday, we have Crafters Classroom. I'm on at 1.30 Central, so adjust your time. I did send out an email today, so I was actually a day ahead. Yay, that doesn't happen very often. And then next Thursday, we have our Fun Time Thursday. Um, then I was thinking, okay, and I'm kind of wondering you guys', you all's opinion, not guys, you gals and guys and people, um, I'm wondering your opinion because I'm thinking about doing um, uh, comments sold and I'm going to try and do them like probably like every two to three months. Um, I think I had them like every three or four months last time, but I'm thinking about doing them after the Thursday night. So starting at like 6.30 on Thursday nights and they won't go as long. They'll be shorter because we'll do them a little bit more often. And that'll keep me cleaning out my stuff <laughs> and getting organized, hopefully. Um, so I'm just wondering what you all think about that. Whether you'd hang out an extra, you know, whether you'd log on again after our Thursday night thing to do a uh, comment sold. That will be shorter. It won't be like an hour and a half to two hours like we sometimes do on Saturdays. So I'm thinking the first one of those will be on March 30th, unless you all say, no way, Jose, we don't want to hang out with you longer. But I'm hoping that's not the case. Anyways, let's go down to the table. All right. Got it. Okay. So just a recap of our, our fun time Thursday that's coming up next week. Kits are almost sold out for these. This is coffee and poo. So coffee card, another coffee card, and then um, just a poo card. So we have a center stair step card and a funky fold accordion. We'll go through how to die cut this. Um, we'll go through how to die cut and some of the step, step cards and then we'll just do a fun little layered card. So that's next week Thursday. Um, even if you didn't buy a kit you can still join us and watch. Then we have our crafters classroom that's on Saturday. Um, so that's the spinner cards. So those we will be doing on Saturday. Let's see if I twir twirled, twirled this one up enough. Somebody said Thursday nights would be great. I can't see all the comments. I just see them periodically. Yeah, they're, they're saying. But so yeah, so n the first Thursday night comment sold will be on, um, March 30th. So anyways, tonight we are talking about embossing <clears throat> folders. I went to Valley Stamp and Scrap, which is my local store, Linda, and I stopped in by her. She lent, lent me a couple embossing folders, plus I bought a couple, because um, I don't have any 3D embossing folders. <laughs> so I, I have embossing folders. I have regular ones, but I don't, don't have any 3D ones. So I thought, okay, we're gonna try something new. Nancy Cloud had asked me about those. And um, so I am not an expert at this. Um, Linda, she's, she's on here. Linda, you should post a link. So I'm gonna have Linda post a link to her Facebook page because she does lives, I think more days. She does lives two or three days a week and then she does some product spotlights too. So. Um, she gets in all kinds of new stuff all the time. So, and you don't have to be local because she does her lives and she sells online. So follow her on Facebook and she shows some good stuff all the time. Anyways, but I did stop by her and get some um, embossing folders. She knows more about it than me. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you do, but we're gonna play tonight with embossing folders, 3D ones. 
So first of all, I'm gonna, I got my big shot out and I'm not gonna keep it out, but I just wanna talk about 3D embossing folders. They're much thicker. So this is just a regular embossing folder. You can't tell much with this one, but it is thicker. But these are the Tim Holtz ones and they're like super thick. So I'm kind of spoiled with my crossover two machine because it winds up and down and I'm going to pull that one or I'm going to use that one most of the night. But I just wanted to pull out my big shot because the sandwich can be a little difficult. So let's talk sandwiches first. Um, if you have a big shot, this is the one that came with it. Mine is well loved. Um, and for die cutting, you're using the main platform, a plate, you're doing your die in your paper and the other plate and you're zipping it through there. When you do an embossing folder, you're on this tab one and your regular embossing folders will go through. And I'm just going to kind of go through that just because because it took me a little bit today to figure out my sandwiches. And they're gonna be different for, you know, different embossing folders, different brands. But this is just a regular one. So I have my regular sandwich, I'm on my tab one, and I have my platform, or my clear plate, which I have a glitter one, and then I have another clear plate, and I can put that through, and it goes through just fine. Um, but, now let's go to this is an Alta new one. So let's just go to that one really quick. And with this same sandwich, it's like way too tight. If you are trying to turn it and it's not turning, don't force it. Um, so the sandwich for that was I took off this bottom plate. I put it right on the platform, I think. And then Oh, that one's still a little bit, that one's too loose. So now I just went back to my regular top of my platform and a top plate, and that one ran through good. So the thing is, you might need to play with your sandwiches a little bit and find out what works. So the 3D, <laughs> let's just <laughs> talk about this for a minute. I was like, your regular embossing folders... I mean, because that's what a, an embossing folder does, is it kind of makes it dimensional. So I wasn't understanding the, um, the like, wow of the 3D embossing folders. Like, well, what's the difference? Because an embossing folder makes it kind of <laughs> dimensional, but this one has different layers of embossed. So this is embossed, but then within that embossing, you have stuff that's popped up higher. So you have stuff that's at different levels and it's much deeper. Um, so now I kind of get the whole 3D embossing thing because it is a whole lot different than just having one level of embossing. So yeah, sometimes I'm a little slow to the game. But anyway, so now let's just go on to one of the Tim Holtz ones. Okay, and let's just test that one and see what sandwich works for that. So, but yes, these are much thicker. So this is the one that I think I went down to my tab one, just set it right on here and put one of my top plates on. And it's a little tight going through there. And, but yeah, you can see that, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but you can see the different layers or the different depth of the embossing. So anyways, while I have this one out, actually, I think I forgot my black paper. Well, bummer. So hang on, talk to my mom for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, several of you have commented about the dancing that I'm doing next week, Friday the 17th. Oh yeah, we have that going on too. I forgot to talk about that. Yeah, so that's, uh, I'll be dancing to Barry Gibbs' um, end song, The End of the Rainbow, which is a waltz that I'm doing as a tribute to my husband, my late husband. And uh, I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be 
<laughs> at the moment. <laughs> we don't know whether we are doing it live or whether we're going to record it and do it. What do you guys prefer? <laughs> so, anyways, while I have this one out, because I'm going to use this one, I'm going to just emboss this in black really quick. And then I'm going to put my big shot away and just be down on the table so we can do some different things. So let me get this. I haven't had my big shot out for a while. I actually had to like dust it off because I normally use my um, my crossover. So we'll put that away. But so this one we did. So sometimes the question comes up of your paper cracking when you're embossing. Text weight paper will almost for sure crack because it's too thin. Um, this paper and the paper that I used before is an 80 pound cardstock. 80 pound smooth cardstock and it's it worked fine it didn't crack um, some people say that you can spritz your paper with a little bit of water um, and I also heard that you could take like a wet baby wipe and rub it over the top of the paper just to give it a little moisture so that will prevent it from cracking um, so so yeah there is that I thought I had, oh, hang on one second, one more minute. <laughs> well, at least we uh, didn't lose our sound this week. That's a good thing, huh? That was quite an, an interesting night last Thursday night. Sarah handled it so nicely. I'm so proud of her. Okay, I'm back again. So, anyways... I like to take and drag ink pads over <laughs> um, embossing a lot. So this one I did. Oh, I know why I didn't do black because I was going to um, use a purple. That's why I didn't have that. So anyways, this one I did just kind of do a tappy tap. But sometimes I will drag them. And you just have to be a kind of a light touch in order to do that. Um, and that just, because these are much deeper, you, you don't tend to get as much ink in that background that you do um, when you use a regular embossing folder. So, and we could do a tappy tap, but I, you get a much better silver. And I'm using an Encore Silver. This is a discontinued ink pad, um, but if you have them, keep them. If you ever see the re-anchors, buy them because it is the best silver ink pad. But yeah. So anyways, I really like the silver on top of the embossing. So that's one thing. Let's go on to, well, let's just take, I did bring some different papers. So I brought a white metallic linen and let's just run that through. Now I'm just gonna use my crossover that's behind me because that one I can adjust. So I'm just gonna bring it over here really quick. The crossover has this little wheel right here and I don't sell them, I just love it. Um, but it has this little wheel so you can tighten it up or loosen it. Um, So that one went through pretty easy. So with one that you can tighten and loosen, you're not dealing with the sandwiches all the time. Oh. What was that? Facebook oh, don't worry about it. Okay. That's, okay. Um, but anyways, I think you guys can still hear me. Yeah. Oh, somebody's asking about your trailer. Okay. So anyways, this is a metallic paper and it's got the linen texture to it and it's probably hard for you guys to see, but you can still see that linen texture in the background and even on the tops of the flowers, which makes it really nice for embossing. Um, then we're going to go on to a different, we're going to just do some papers first before I go on to the water and some more inks. So this one I'm going to try right now is a Miri Lava. So we're going to put that one through there. So 
So the Miri lava, look at that. Ooh, that does gosh. not crack at all. Ooh, that's gorgeous. That is gorgeous. I could have tightened it up. It would have gotten it a little bit deeper on some of those areas. But I can see using um, some alcohol inks on top of here. That would be really pretty. But yeah, the mirror card. I'm going to do the mirror card really quick. Sarah, who makes the crossover? The crossover um, is made by Dyes Direct. I don't know, like Rubbernecker sells the crossover. I don't know if they sell it. Dyes Direct is like where I get my dyes from. So this one is kind of different. This is the, and it depends on what you want sticking out. Do you want the bricks sticking out or the in between the bricks sticking out? So, and especially when you're using a paper that has two sides, then it really matters. Um, let me see if I did the bricks earlier. I did do the bricks earlier. So you can either have like the grout sticking out, or you can have the brick sticking out with the grout going in. So on regular white paper, it doesn't matter. When you're using a paper that's two-sided, then you have to watch which side you have facing up. So this, and I have to think about it a little bit. This is the grout line and it's gonna go into my gold. So with this one, even with my crossover, they have a thicker plate. And even if I take this one down all the way, I still can't get it through. It's still too tight. So I did have to pull out my big shot in order to get it to go through even with the crossover. So there is playing with your sandwich, whether you're using the crossover machine or whether you are using um, a big shot machine or whatever machine you're using. Just never force it, because if you force it, you can break machines. Believe me, I have two broken machines. So that... Crafter's see? Edge. Oh, Crafter's Edge, okay. Okay. Um, so that's with it embossed. I think this would look really good with alcohol inks on it, different reds um, and browns. So I might do that later. But let's put this behind me now that I get this big luggy thing out of here. Now let's go on to some inks. We're going to have some fun with inks. So with this one, um, I have our cold press watercolor paper. Um, and I don't want it white to begin with. So I'm going to start out and just <clears throat> do direct to paper so I can take make it not white. Because I don't want the grout lines to be totally white. I just don't. And then on my bricks, I am going to take another distress oxide ink, a brown, and I'm just going to rub that all over there. My bricks are going to be brown. And then I am going to do some orange, like this is fired brick. We'll just do it in a few spots on there. And then I'm going to spritz it with water. And I'm going to spritz it off to the side because I don't want to get it all over my thing. But I'll bring it back. So you can tell that there's water droplets on there. Okay. The cold press watercolor can take a large amount of water. Now I'm thinking about it. Am I doing it the right way? Hang mm -hmm. on a second. and I'm doubting myself. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna do it. Let's 
So I'm back here, I'm running it through my machine. And there is our brick wall. So I kind of like that with all the different colors on there. Um, yeah, I could have added more, more orange to it to make it more bricky, but yeah, that's my brick wall. So I'm just going to dry it. Now you can see that it's really wet in there and that's okay because the cold press takes lots of ink. Um, but I'm just going to heat set it because I do want to add some brown to it. So this is a 140 pound paper. And you can see when you heat it, the colors, you know, mute out a little bit because of the distress oxides. I want to dry it all the way, but I don't know if I'm patient enough to dry it all the way. So. Sherry Wacker says the crossover is used by quilters for cutting fabric also. Yeah, I've forgotten about that. So now I'm going to take my brown and just kind of go lightly over the top. And that's just adding color to so the bricks are a little bit more defined. But yeah, that's my brick wall. So I've never done that where I actually spritzed on the embossing folder after putting ink on it. So that was a Linda tip today. So thank you. So, but yeah, that's my brick wall. And that's the back of my brick wall. So the last time, you know, this is kind of what your real brick wall looks like, but with the color, I really like that because I had to put the color on the more flat part. I did try it earlier and I tried putting color on these lines that are embossed and then you don't get you just get the really thin lines of color. So I wanted my color all over the bricks and that's why my, you know, the grout is popped out instead of popped in. But yeah, that's my brick wall. I'll use that for a card at Thanks, some point. Linda. She said that looks awesome, Sarah. Thank you. So let's see there, which is my next one that I had. Oh, my big flower I wanted to do with spritzing water, too. <laughs> and where is my big flower? Uh-oh, we lost some things earlier. Yeah. Did you look on the floor, Sarah? Oh, no, I found it. Okay. Okay. So, so the big flower. Um, and this is, this is it on white. Okay. So now... I, you, I showed you guys once how I took embossing folders to, or how I took a brayer to an embossing folder. Well, with the, um, with the 3D ones, there are so many different levels that I think it's better to actually take the ink pad. So I'm going to take the ink pad mostly to the flat side. Hey, Sarah, Linda says logo side up. Logo side up like that? I don't know. So, <laughs> anyways, well, I'm putting ink on this side, which is the more flat side right here. So I played around with this, and this this one I really like. So I'm gonna <laughs> okay. So yeah, Linda gives me lessons sometimes. She's the one that gave me lessons on the um, stencil butters. So those are thanks to Linda, and then we got our embossing folders from Linda. But, so I'm going to go and I'm going to drag this across. Now, I'm not going to press too hard because I don't want to get too much ink in here. I want it mostly on the background. Um, but I do want a little bit of ink in there. <laughs> that's the logo side you're using now. Yeah, that's the logo side that I'm using now. <laughs> so, and if I get ink in the middle of my flowers, I don't really want it there. So I'm just going to take my fingers. I'm going to get a messy and I'm going to get my ink out of there. It's okay if there's a little bit there. Um, that's perfectly fine, but I didn't want a lot of ink there. So now I'm going to spritz this again. Let's see where's my water bottle. Yeah, I don't do messy a whole lot. You guys don't see that. So I'm going to spritz off camera just so I don't get it all over my table. 
Okay, so you can tell there's lots of water on there. I got stuff everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I think we'd have to do something about this. So now I am looking for a piece of my cold pressed watercolor that's a square. I'm going to set it on there, fold it up, and then I'm going to pray <laughs> that it works. Um, no, it will. Oh, Sherry, five to eight inches in southwestern Wisconsin tonight. Oh, geez. Southeastern Wisconsin, I mean. Okay, so here we go. The big reveal. That's the back. There's my front. Um, if you can keep that mostly clean in there, your flowers will come out fair, you know, white with your colored background. So I've got a little bit of ink right there, and that's okay. Um, oh, yike, I like that. Yeah. Ooh. So hang on, I'm finding a paper towel so I can wipe off my embossing folder. Actually, I should clean it better than that, but. So now this one, I'm just gonna heat it to dry it a little bit. And this one I'm actually gonna make a card out of. But with that cold pressed watercolor, it just takes a ton of water. Okay, so I have it mostly dry. I think dry enough. And I don't do squares a whole lot either. So we're working outside of Sarah's comfort zone here. And that's okay. And this is a piece of ionized. And I'm going to go back to my white one in a little bit, and we're going to brush blend over the top of it. You know you couldn't get by a night without me totally, without me brush blending. So this is our large square card, so it's five and three quarters by five and three quarters, and it fix, fits in our six inch envelope. So now it's just which way I want to do it. Because the words I have for, this is a sympathy card. So I just have a with sympathy to go on top of here. Oops. So I did one earlier. So let me just attach this one. But I did one earlier with the same thing and I made it into a wedding card. I actually think I like my wedding card better. So I'll pull that one out in a little bit. Um, this is something that if I did a class with this, we'd actually have to get the embossing folders or have embossing folders available. And then um, if you have them, then you can just use your own. If you don't, you know, then you could order some with your kit. So, because that would kind of be good, fun to do like an inky type class and different different things. So hang on a second, let me get my micro dot adhesive. Okay. So I did to put two with sympathies together just to give them a little bit of dimension. This one I don't think turned out as good as my wedding card that I did earlier, but I, I like it. And I'm not sure where I'm going to put the width, so hang on, I'm not going to attach that one quite yet. <clears throat> I know I'm going to put this down here, so... And then for attaching, I, I do like to turn it over and give it a little little push. So I had my sympathy card. 
The background on that one did not turn out as well as my other one that I did earlier today, which now I lost that one. <laughs> okay, well, sometime before the end of the night, I will, the, in a few minutes, I will find my other card that I did. Um, but <laughs> like, well, I have the, stuff <laughs> everywhere. What the heck? <laughs> So, but let's go on to this one just really quick because you could do some brush blending on here too. And I was just trying to find a smaller brush. Well, I've got cards from like next week and this weekend and oh, here it is. Hang on a second. So yeah, well, I knew you would find yeah. it, Sarah. <laughs> That's my wedding card that I did, kind of in the same technique. I like how this one turned out a little bit darker up there. Um, but yeah, I just took the same color combinations and made with this 3D embossing folder. So anyways, but let's go on to here, because you can do brush blending on top. So we could highlight just the flowers if we wanted, like you can use the smaller blending brushes so you can do just certain areas. And when you do that, your embossing will usually turn out a little bit darker, the edges of it. So, and I could use a smaller detailed brush and do some greens in there. Or I could do a smaller brush, let me see if I have one, and do some oranges in the middle. So yeah, you can brush blend right over the top of your 3D embossing. So with some more detailed brushes I could do the um, leaves or you could use a something even like a little you know makeup brush on there I don't have the patience for that I would rather brush brush blend the whole thing like for example if we took this one and I did the direct to paper over that with the silver but let's just try and brush blend that really quick and see what happens they want a class Sarah they want a class So how many, do you guys have lots of embossing folders? Because yeah, we could do a class. I would just have to secure a bunch of embossing folders so you had that available to get the exact ones I was using or you could use ones that um, you have. But um, yeah, it's kind of nice where you could do, instead of me embossing them all for you, is if we can do some inking on the embossing folders. But yeah, see how you get more ink on the top of your embossing. So you get a little bit of variance in ink. So yeah, they're kind of fun. And yeah, I, I think I'm going to consider that if I can find, well I'm sure Linda can help me with getting some embossing folders. Some people have some. Wendy Little's got so many. Yeah. <laughs> and Marion Phillips says we can buy some. So anyways, so thank you for joining me tonight um, for our fun with embossing folders. We have our brick wall. We have this one. So yeah, I've got some, some panels here to make some cards now. So Anyways, thanks for joining me tonight, and we will see you on Saturday, guys.